Did you know it took just one conversation to change Gardner's life forever? During a period in which he was struggling with his meager earnings as a medical salesman, Christopher Gardner saw a smartly dressed man drive up in a red Ferrari. Where's Gardner? How are you? Curious, he asked the man what he did for a living. The man answered that he was a stockbroker, and from then on, Gardner's mind was made up and he wanted to become a stockbroker as well. I were trying to come up with a story that would explain my being here dressed like this. When Gardner shows up to the interview in dirty paint-covered clothes, he tells his soon-to-be employers the truth about what happened and even throws in a joke about pants. It turns out that this Dean Witter scene was actually accurate. The real Chris Gardner showed up underdressed to his interview. Unlike the film, he didn't come directly from jail or make a killer pants joke, but from staying at a friend's house where he had limited clothing options. But outside of those two details, the movie portrayed the interview scene perfectly. Painting my apartment. Is it dry now? <laughs> I hope so. Jay says you're pretty determined. With this film, Will Smith really showed that he's capable of so much more than being the funny guy in an action-packed blockbuster. He portrays Chris Gardner with total empathy and was rewarded with an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor in 2007. Jay. Yes, sir. How many times have you seen Chris? You know, I don't know. One too many, apparently. Is he ever dressed like this? No. Do you know why happiness is spelled wrong in the title? The title is intentionally misspelled, as it also appears as graffiti in a scene on the outer wall of Christopher Jr.'s daycare center. The misspelled phrase is actually taken from an essay written in 1776 that argued that all people, whether white or black, are created equal. Can I say something? Um, I'm the type of person. The original budget for the movie was about $55 million, and during the opening weekend alone, nearly half of that amount was earned at $27 million. It went on to gross about $162.5 million in the U.S. and Canada, and a total of $307.1 million worldwide. What would you say if a guy walked in for an interview without a shirt on? And I hired him. What would you say? He must have had on some really nice pants. <laughs> Chris, I don't know how you did it dressed as a garbage man, but you really pulled it off in there. Thank you very much, Mr. Twistle. Hey, now you can call me Jay. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All right, so I'll let you know, Jay. In the original book, Gardner's internship at the brokerage firm wasn't unpaid as he received a small salary for the duration of the training. There's no salary. No. I was not aware of that. My circumstances have changed some, and I need to be certain. That when Chris, Will Smith, tells Jay, Brian Howe, that he'll let him know if he's going to accept the internship position, there is a very subtle reference to men in black. When Agent Jay asks Agent K if it's worth it to accept the job, Agent K turns back over the wrong shoulder and points at Agent J. The exact same thing happens in this scene. Smith is deciding if he is going to take the job, and Howe turns back over the wrong shoulder and points at him. Tonight. Look at that. Did you know that Will Smith took lessons from professionals to solve the Rubik's Cube in under two minutes for his role in the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness? Navy, I worked for a doctor. Speed cubing champions Tyson Mao, Toby Mao, and Lars Petrus were hired to coach Will Smith to solve the Rubik's Cube as fast as possible. So I'm, I'm used to being in a position where, where I have to make decisions. And Mr. Twistle. Smith's first on air scene with a Rubik's Cube was in Fresh Prince of Bel Air. In an episode, Phil gets Will an interview at Princeton. Will grabs the unsolved Rubik's Cube off of the Dean's desk and solves it in about a minute. Give it here. Oh, yeah. oh wow, you, you uh, really messed it up. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it, it looks like it, it uh, 
works around a, a swivel. The so pursuit of happiness is based on the real story of a Milwaukee-born man named Christopher Paul Gardner, born February 9, 1954, who struggled in the early 1980s to make ends meet while raising his toddler son. Oh, listen, we can drive around all day. I, I don't believe you can do this. Yeah, I can. No, no, no you can't. The movie was filmed in various locations around California, especially in and around San Francisco, Oakland, and Alameda County. The training program that Gardner followed to become a stockbroker was the Dean Witter Training Program. Even though anybody that passed the final exam of the training program would eventually be offered a full-time job, it's clear that Gardner had a talent for this profession as well. I'm gonna get it. Look at that. He scored an astounding 88% on the test and was offered a job that changed his life forever. Chris Gardner has become a philanthropist who gives back to the community. He knows what it's like to be in a tough spot. One of his major accomplishments, apart from sponsoring numerous charities, was helping fund a $50 million project to set up low-cost housing in an area of San Francisco, where he once was homeless. For his performance in The Pursuit of Happiness, Smith was nominated for an Oscar and a Golden Globe for Best Actor. Good job. Goodbye. Okay. I'll see you, see you soon. Uh, where are you going, sir? Excuse me, sir. Where are you going, please? Um, uh, two, uh, a couple blocks. Just flip around. 